Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today we're going to be looking at a game that I fear to pronounce. It's, um, well, it's at least spelled like this, and you've probably seen it in the title. I'm going to call it Colat, and I apologise profusely in advance because that's probably terribly wrong. This is a game, it's a horror game, and it's a game based on a real thing that happened that I also fear to pronounce, the Dyatlov incident. I really hope I got that right. It was, in fact, the Dyatlov Pass incident. And I still probably didn't say it right. Big thanks to IMGN Pro for sponsoring this video, but you don't need me wittering on about a game that I still haven't played yet and I'm playing for the first time, so let's dive right into things. <laughs> right, so here we are. I've actually just whacked the brightness up a fair old bit because um, even though I can see on this monitor, that's what I've calibrated it to be very easy to see, I just checked the, the feed of the footage and it was a bit dark and I've made this mistake with Star Wars games before, so let's make sure we don't do it this time. <laughs> 56 years ago, Russia, the northern Ural Mountains. A group of nine students of the Ural Polytechnic Institute embarked upon a difficult winter expedition to reach the Ototan Mountain. You know, I nearly explained this myself in considerably less detail. The journey seemed to progress according to plan. However, on the seventh day of their trip, the weather conditions worsened. They lost their orientation and were forced to set up a camp on the slope of the mountain called Kolat Siakl. Kolat! I got it right! It was their last stop. Three weeks later in Yekaterinburg, when their families received no word of their success, the first rescue expeditions were sent. This is real, by the way. This isn't made up. This is real. This On bit, February anyway. On February 25th, 1959, an abandoned encampment was found. The tent was torn down and covered with snow, with all the group's belongings left inside. Further examination revealed it was cut from inside out. The surrounding footprints indicated the crew had fled the tent. They were barefooted. This suggests a frantic escape, characteristic of people scared out of their wits. Two sets of prints led to a forested area down the slope. The rescue team found an improvised fireplace and two bodies. They were lying in but their underwear, with cuts and scratches to their limbs, suggesting they had tried to climb the tree in panic. What could terrify them so much? The next three bodies were found scattered a few hundred meters from the first discovery. One of them had suffered a fractured skull, this despite no evidence of a struggle. Ugh. It took the spring thaw, two months later, to enable the rescue team to find the rest of the victims. The last four skiers were found buried in a thick layer of ice and snow. Their autopsies led to even more bizarre findings. All of the bodies had severe internal injuries caused by an undetermined force, similar to that of a serious car accident. No external damage nor bruises were visible, besides a tongue ripped from one victim's mouth and a strange uh. orange skin color. Much speculation arose from these puzzling events. Like Such the theories the included attack out. from the local tribesmen, from an avalanche or animals. Each theory, however, only served to create more questions. The truth behind this tragic course of events remains unexplained to this day. What really happened? Maybe the answer still waits to be discovered deep under the snow. I have a feeling we're about to find out. <laughs> so yes, that is a real thing that happened and... Oh, I'm already controlling. That was a real thing that happened. Um, I, I can't remember the exact date. I'll have it up on screen instead. Um, and this is sort of um, inspired by those events and that's about all I know. I've specifically kept myself in the dark as I think these sort of things are usually better when you kept yourself in the dark. It's sort of a horror experience. And although ironically, I am extremely well lit right now. Absolutely zero idea what I'm supposed to do or where I'm supposed to go. And I think that's the point. They've really just thrown me in, haven't they? <laughs> Very nice that it's narrated by Sean Bean though. That was a lovely surprise that I only found out a few days ago. I do love me some Sean Bean. As far as I know, he lives as the narrator in this, but We'll find out. My gut instinct is telling me to go down here just because it's a big long stretch. Can I see my feet? I 
Oh, I can't even look all the way down. So maybe I do have feet. Let me know in the comments whether you think I have feet. Oh, kind of reaching the end. Is this maybe an instance where I can go in any number of directions? Oh, there's a sprint button. Ha ha. We can save ourselves some sweet, valuable time. I mean, breathing's heavy. And oh, oh. I don't know whether that'll come through on YouTube properly, but the um, your vision starts going ever so slightly funny when you've sprinted for a long time. That's an interesting effect. I can't run for very long. It's not like Skyrim where you're jumping around all over the place or Breath of the Wild where you're gliding around all over the place. This tree seems to be blocking my path. I, j I just don't know where to go. Have I missed something really obvious? I... Oh. Oh. Are you coming to me? Footprints. Sean Bean. Trees at odd angles. It's the perfect romantic night in. The snow is really clouding everything. The fog as well. Oh, ah! whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> in the end, the only thing I saw was a flash. An insufferable burning light, the pain ripping apart my body. I felt it tearing out of my soul. After a while, I was nobody, nothing. The I... light went out and I vanished into overwhelming darkness. I welcomed the end with delight. I can't see a blooming thing, like a, a thing. And again, I'm assuming I've just got to keep running. I've just got to keep going, keep going, push on through. Push on through to the other side. That's how that famous song goes. I'm absolutely certain of it. I can... Oh, there's a sort of a landmark. Oh, God, I've heard about this. When you've got low landmarks, you end up walking around in a circle. Ooh. That's a real thing. That's a tenty boy. Can I... I can go inside. Oh. I am right behind you. I've got a feeling Mr. Sean Bean is telling some fibs. Well, that was a bizarre turn of it. <laughs> so, no, I'm, I just wandered in the snow. Was there a, was there anywhere else I could have gone? It felt really quite open-ended. Maybe not. I don't know. Act have you two. Ever tried to hold on to your humanity. Daily. Others convince you of being no more than a subject, an object, which they can bend to their will. When they told you that you were a monster that deserved punishment and you could really not remember your sins when they took away your loved ones leaving you to rot in the dark the problem is that in their darkness you have never been alone not exactly uh, overwhelmed with confidence by those footprints but oh oh jumping right back in can I go back in the tent? I think that seems to honestly be the safest option. Shoes, I could do with those if I have feet. I really don't know. Whoa. Incidentally, I can't help but wonder that maybe, ooh. Survival info. Running in deep snow is tiring. Adjust the pace to surrounding conditions so you don't exhaust your organism. Um, before setting off for a longer journey, rest in the camp and set a goal for a safe route. You can focus on ZL on any object to take a better look at it. Lighting your way with a flashlight, you become more visible. Can I turn that up? No, okay, not in this one. Anyway, um, observe your environment carefully before navigation with the help of... Why? What's gonna get me? Barely accessible rocky notches may lead to interesting places and shortcuts. To gain access to them, you will sometimes have to squeeze through... Uh, low-lying obstacles or jump off them. Well, that's, um, reassuring. Ooh! That looks like just the sort of thing I want to investigate. I want to make sure that I, um, don't exhaust my organism. So we've got five pillars, or sort of monolith-type things, that kind of look... Well, no, that one looks a bit like a head, but I can hear something. Oh! Oh, what joy! 
Well, this is definitely worthy of investigation. I set out the moment I heard about the incident. I was in the area, so I reported to the unit myself to be automatically assigned to the case. I arrived at Vichai on February the 19th, a couple of days before the Institute's rescue group. While waiting for them, I started asking around to see if anyone from among the locals knew anything about the incident. One of them said he had a hunting cabin in the search region and knew the area very well. I decided to use him as a guide. When the rescue team had finally arrived, I explained to them what the unit's role was in this mission and that all discoveries or observations should be brought to my attention before anyone else's. We established priorities, checked the equipment and set off right away. It was not until February the 26th we found the tent that I believe belonged to the students. Initial findings show that the people in the tent cut its side wall and for some reason tried to escape from it in panic. The tracks in the snow led to a forest a kilometre and a half away. But the trail went cold after 500 metres and we had to carefully search the entire area. This was not a place of any average incident. We had shivers crawling all over our bodies because of the atmosphere surrounding us. I was convinced that something more than just an accident had occurred here. I had the feeling we were dealing with something unnatural. Right, okay, so I'm guessing... This... Whoa, okay! <laughs> uh, sp what was that about unnatural? Can I... Whoa, okay. <laughs> Whoa! What? Okay, so I got um, attack. Right, so I'm guessing. I can't see the. I can't see the thing that got me anywhere. Oh. 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 That's what I've got on the screen. It's interesting to know though that. I'm not the, um, I'm not one of the campers. I'm not playing as one of the campers. Okay, so I've, <laughs> Lordy, this is, um, quite the expanse to explore. So we've got all the, oh, it goes all the way up here as well. I'm guessing those four people were running off. There's one, two, Maybe it's not just as clear as those paths. Clearly, I'm not supposed to uh, engage those things just yet. Those people, those ghosts, those spirits, those spirims, those spictrims, whatever they are. Just yet, at the very least. There's five of them, and I saw, I saw five of those pillars, sorry, and I saw four of those people, so... Am I the fifth? Am I embodying something? Is something Im embodied in me? Yowzeruni. Let's find out. Oh, that's handy. Got a little compass. And I can focus on things. That does nothing. That brings up... The oh, that brings up the map. That's really handy. Zoom map. Zoom. <laughs> Zoom map. Lower map. That's actually really useful. Right, okay, I'm as prepared as I think I'm ever gonna be. And I'm gonna run and exhaust my organism as quickly as possible because that seems like a sensible notion. Oh, oh. Little bit of loading. I really think you should be watching this video with headphones on. I think it's, uh, it's only gonna end up being a stereo video, of course, but I think you'll definitely get more out of it. And you'll be able to hear my voice in both ears, which you'd probably do anyway. Even so, wear headphones. Good big old cans like this. Ow. I have chosen you. Oh. You are remarkable. Just like me. But you are losing your mind, my friend. You're slipping slowly into the abyss, and there is no one to give you a hand. And at the bottom, I am the only one waiting for you. I've got to be honest, Sean Bean comparing me to him, I'm down with that any day of the week. Everything else he said, not so keen on. Um, it's very windy up here, to say the least. 
God no, what's over here? Just a, a lovely view. A lovely view. I'm assuming I'm on the mountain. It would make sense because of the, the whole camp and everything. You know, I've... I've always liked the idea of doing like, you know, sort of proper mountain, mountaineering, hiking, things like that. But I can't help but deny it also scares the living nonsense out of me. The sort of the realities of it all. And not being warm for days on end and shivering and sleeping bags. I really don't like sleeping bags. I'm mildly, mildly claustrophobic. And yeah, so the thing that um, scares me most about this game so far is the fact that I've used a sleeping bag. What a silly thing to say. I've completely lost my bearings. I'm guessing I don't even have... It doesn't even say where I am. I'm guess, I think I went down here. It doesn't even say where I am. It doesn't even give me that. Which I think is good. It means I've got to try and use my map reading skills, which are abysmal. There's something over here. Sounds crinkly. Better investigate it. It's a piece of paper. Let's have a nosy. Is going to read it out? Nope, it's down to me. Mysterious lights above the... Oh, Svobodny Cosmodrome. Mysterious events in the sky were noted during the night of the 4th to the 5th of July. Witnesses testified they had seen a bright orange sphere which had crossed the sky above the city several times, moving chaotically and immediately changing its directions of flight. Finally, it stopped and disappeared. I nearly said disappointed. So great, we've got uh, we've we've got aliens to deal with as well. Maybe, maybe they're aliens. Maybe they're not. I've recently started watching the X Files, which I've never seen before. So a mind and uh, orbs flying around in the sky. It's aliens. It's aliens, Scully. Bong. Oh, I'm not sure whether I should interact with them because it actually took quite a long time to get here. Within reason. Oh. Someone else running up to... Are they pointing for me? No, they're just standing there and they're going up to... What appears to be some sort of... Tower? I don't know. I think I'm gonna leave them to it. I'm hearing a lot of... A lot of atmospheric things and it's actually putting me ever so slightly on edge, to be honest. Here. Whoa! Oh, sweet babies. I don't like that one bit. Are they coming after me? I've got a horrible feeling they are. Whoa! There's another one of those boys. Okay, I'm avoiding these as much as I can. Don't like them. Don't like those gangle creatures. I'm gonna take a leaf out of Mr. Sean Bean's book and get shot several times by arrows to save some hobbits. Okay, I think, um, I think I'm out of their radius now, maybe. Oh, don't want to go down there. There's trees down there. Definitely don't want to go down there. I will die. I think you... Great! I've got wolves to deal with as well. Well, that's just grand. Ooh, it's a little cavern. It's very empty. Very empty indeed. I wonder whether those tall gangly things are aliens. And that's also death, I'm assuming. I don't know whether I can go over edges. Now I'm starting to wonder if that is actually a wolf or not. I mean, it could be something considerably worse. Ooh, there's a thingy for me. That's worth sprinting for. What do we got? Uh, a, a, Seversk, Seversk, a closed city in Tamas, to, Tomsk Oblast, <laughs> Oblast, Russia, located 15 kilometers, 9.3 miles, northwest of Tomsk on the night of the, uh, on the night bank of the river... T what? What? What relevance does this have? It's talking about, uh, like, chemical treatment plants and, uh, and nuclear reactors and stuff like that. Doesn't seem enormously relevant. I'm gonna continue my sprinting journey. Let's see what's, um... 
What's about? I've got to somehow get back to the camp as well. It feels like it took me ages to get here. That's not helpful, noisy wolf. I wouldn't consider you welcome in my abode if you're going to be that noisy. I don't know where I was supposed to go down at that point, but I did anyway. Game can't tell me what to do. It can, or you don't experience the game. I've got to you say, have to go whoa, whoa! I don't have a lot of time left. You have to hurry. Find the way. Find me, or I'll unleash hell upon you. Sean, mate, calm down. Is is that? Am I supposed to do something quickly? I don't like that mist. I really don't like that mist. I don't know if I'm actually supposed to do... I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Is this is this scripted? Or is, is this because I took too long? Or... I, ah, there's noises. <laughs> Sean Bean. Oh, why are you so mean? Some sort of ill wind behind me. And I don't... I don't, I don't want to sprint too much. I don't want to tire out my organism. Come on. Am I even going the right way? Ah! I'm going to go over here. Okay, music's died down a little bit, I think. What's over here? Maybe I should really be looking at my using my compass and my map, I think. Because I am so lost. Okay, that's where I came from down there. 30 degrees east. Right at the end up there. Okay, so if I came from that and I'm looking down there, I need to follow that path all the way to that tip down there and travel north. How did I get the compass out before? Like that, okay. So I need to travel essentially north. This is kind of north. That, that looks... Oh, lordy. Oh, this is stressful. This game doesn't give you a lot. I mean, it gives you some coordinates. I suppose that's better than nothing. I'm looking for two paths converging. Two paths converging up to a point. Which is that. Yes! Oh my god, I've actually been able to use a map. I have not been... <laughs> only because the game left some markers for me. Good lord. That... Whoa! What? What? Okay, so that's where I came from before, and I want to go north. So, continue down here. <laughs> Some lines in the rocks then just looked just like one of those shadow gangle creatures. I'm going to keep an eye out. I don't know whether there's... Whether I can run from them? There's the church. I'm gonna have to keep an eye on the floor. Because they leave those orange footprints. That I think is gonna be the clearest indicator for me because they are not easy to see otherwise. Is that noise good or bad? Can I go in please? Oh my lord, oh my lordy no, 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 no. What was that? And are they still in here? I saw someone running up here. So there's got to be something in here. There's got to be. The bell. <gasps> there it is. It's the big glowing thing. What have we got? We discovered the first bodies by the pine trees. A makeshift campfire suggested they tried to warm up. The bodies were only in underwear. I decided to thoroughly search the area between the tent and the tree line. I discovered the other bodies every few hundred meters apart. Their position indicated the victims attempted to return to the tent as fast as they could. This could mean that the threat was gone and the group decided to go back to the tent, or just the opposite. Someone or something appeared from the forest and forced its victims to run. At this point, it is difficult to determine what exactly happened. I have collected small samples from all bodies for further research at the unit's laboratory. I discussed this situation with the rest of the rescue team and afterwards they focused on the visual inspection of the tent and areas by the trees, and I entered the forest. 
Okay, I'm assuming that's an important thing I need. Let's have a look at the um, let's have a look at the map and make sure. Right, I know for a fact that I'm there. Ah, it's made a marker. Yes, okay, so I've got to find all these markers. Good gravy. Okay, I'm gonna hang and keep going left and maybe go around this little wiggly thing there. There's gotta be something there. Oh, it's making me really, really want to be able to use something like map markers. Let's go up here. There was a big orange mist that's now gone. That can only be a good thing. Ooh. Ooh. <gasps> a camp! Yes! Make a nice little camp. And I can fast travel so I can go back there if I want. You know what? I'm going to look. I am going to fast travel. I'm going to look in a different area so we're not just wandering around the same things. Wow, that actually loaded really quickly. <laughs> Far more quickly than I anticipated. And so our hero headed northeast instead of where he was before and spent a lot of time doing not an awful lot and not saying much either. He looked at a stick in a cave and that was about the most interesting thing. So let's rejoin our hero when something's actually happening and he's not wandering around aimlessly. I've got a feeling I've got to go down here, but I think that I will die if I jump from this cliff. Let's try it anyway. <laughs> it's just like it's just like real mountaineering. You, you, yeah, yeah. Turns out I'm all right. I'm expecting Mr. Sean Bean to pipe up at any moment. Also, where am I? I really don't know. <laughs> I think I'm around here. Give or take. Hmm. Really not certain of that. As soon as I can find some sort of landmark, I'll be laughing. You're a stick. You can be a landmark. Unfortunately, I'm not laughing. Ooh, is that sort of a frozen lake or rivery thing or something? And get this tree out of my field of view. Ooh, frozen waterfall. Oh, lordy. What are you guys up to now? Running across the ice? That's dangerous. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> Where are you going? I'm assuming I don't want to catch up to them. That sounds like a terrible idea. Oh, oh. And the mist again. What does the mist mean? I don't like it. The game constantly doesn't tell me anything. I'm constantly guessing. Which I think, actually, for a horror game, is better, personally. Setting out rules and systems can work, but I think it's better if you're forced into the unknown. I don't want to go near the fog! Oh! The fog got me! The fog got me! Don't go near the fog, Alex. Oh dear, I've been sent back to the campsite and I think that's probably a good place to leave it, but blimey, this is... Oh God, it's just... <laughs> just the sound of the tent rustling. It sounded like footsteps. I thought, oh my God, what's nearby? I'm really curious to see more of this game, actually. I think it's one of those games that is probably better to be experienced firsthand uh, rather than, you know, sort of in, you know, through YouTube videos and stuff like that. Um, so I think it's almost better that I leave it there, just give you a mere taster, and if you're interested, you like it, well, this video was sponsored, wasn't it? So you can find out more about the game by checking the link in the description. Oh, thank you. Once again, big thanks to IMGN Pro for sponsoring this video, and thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then why don't you wander aimlessly through that subscribe button terrified <laughs> and be sure to check out nintendolife.com for all sorts of lovely nintendo related content thank you again for watching bye bye i gotta put my headphones on put my headphones on and they're not plugged in at the other end Ah, no! <laughs> Naughty hand.